morning today i have come with the module 6.6 that i am going to explain the type of allowances so i told you 6.6 is one part of salary computation see module 6 is allocated only for computation of salary 6.1 i have explained the basic concepts of salary that is what are the features of salary what is the definition of salary? What all are included in salary? Module 6.2, I have explained what is what are provident funds, types of provident funds, taxability for provident fund. Module 6.3, I have explained debt come retirement gratuity. We have worked out problems also and you have learned the concept now. 6.4, we have learned the concept of computation of pension. So that I told you, it's an important component, gratuity and pension. We have learned that theoretical aspects and problems. 6.5 is dealing with encashment of leave salary, taxation of encashment of leave salary. Then 6.6 we are going to explain allowances. So that is this module is about. So we have heard this term allowance. Always it is there. We have heard in the salary component. We have heard in the newspapers dearness allowance. Sometimes you can see that. Government has increased dearness allowance for central government employees. In the lockdown period, you have heard that dearness allowance, whatever central government has increased for three years, they have frozen that. That they are not going to implement that. So this certain steps they are taking, it has got lot of relevance in the computation of tax and in the salary income of the employees. So here you have to remember that what are different allowances? The word allowance meaning something in addition. I hope you know that the basic salary will be one component. Then dearness allowance will be there. House rent allowance will be there. City compensatory allowance will be there. Uniform allowance, servant allowance, orderly allowance, transport allowance. So these are the different terms which we will come across in the computation of salary. So to understand this and to learn the taxability of these allowances, we have to learn what are allowances? So this module is completely a theoretical module. There is no problems, but this theoretical concept which you have to use when you are using the salary computation. So that is the importance of this module. So I'm going to explain with the help of PowerPoint presentation and I hope that you will learn this module when you will listen to this video and you will learn the taxability and the components of that in detail. So what I'm going to explain is the general explanation about allowances. So allowance you have to remember any sum or amount received regularly. See when I am getting my salary, I am getting dearness allowance, I am getting house rent allowance, I am getting city compensatory allowance because I live in a city bang Bangalore and I work in a city Bangalore. Whereas if I work in Tumkur, I am not eligible for getting city compensatory allowance. That is allowed only for people working in the city. So dearness allowance will be there for everyone. Uh, house rent allowance will be there for everyone. So this you have to remember that the total gross salary will be a component of different things. One component will be the basic salary. Then dearness allowance will be there. City compensatory allowance will be there. Uniform allowance, uh, house rent allowance, all these components. So now that is what we are going to learn in detail. So this amount given to employees along with salary to meet certain type of expenses. Why I am getting house rent allowance? The term itself, we are going to learn that next module is what is about house rent allowance. So house rent allowance meaning, see when you are moving to a city for work for the first time, you have to go to a rented accommodation. So this government in the salary, they will include certain amount to meet, to pay that expenses for the, for the rent. So that is the house rent allowance. You are going to learn that in detail. Different types of treatment is there for house rent allowance also. So house rent allowance meaning the name itself is clear. For meeting the rental expenses in the salary component, an amount is included to help the employees to meet the rental expenses. So this uniform elements meaning if you see if I am working in a police department, I have to make the I have to be in the uniform. So there they will give me a uniform elements. So I will spend that amount or I may get some extra amount from that whatever I got as uniform elements. So what will be the taxability of that? All this we are going to learn this in this module. So first I have explained house rent elements or HRA. 
I am going to explain in detail in the next module, house trend elements. Now, we have to remember that elevances are divided into three. One is fully exempted, fully taxable and partially taxable. Please remember that these topics are important for two more questions. So, sometimes you will get question, section A or section B. Point out six fully exempted items or eight fully exempted items, fully taxable items, partially taxable elements. All this will be there. So, it's very important. So, you have to remember that you have to learn this topic. Mainly theory and for doing the problems also, this will be important. So, the next slide is fully exempted elements. What are the fully exempted elements? First thing you have to remember, foreign elements for employees posted outside India. You know that those who people who got IFS, like IAS, IFS, IP, IFS, IPS, those who got IFS will be working as ambassadors of our country. They will be serving other, they will be working in other countries. So what all elements they will get, it will be completely exempted. Second one is house rent elements given to high court and supreme court judges. Last module when I explained also I told you how high court and supreme court judges are getting lot of preferences. So you have to remember that what all elements they are getting that will be completely exempted. Now, sanctuary elements to Supreme Court and High Court judges. Sanctuary elements meaning, see you have seen that how Supreme Court and High Court judges will walk, uh, they will go in the traffic also. You can see that they have a uh, red signal will be there, that board will be there, High Court judge, Supreme Court judge or police escort will be there. All these things. So, that meaning they are getting something extraordinary compared to other employees. They will be getting orderly, they will be getting a fully furnished Bangalore, they will be getting all the types of servants, cook, provision, Everything, you name the item, diesel, vehicle, official vehicle, petrol, you name the item, you will be getting that. So that is the meaning of sumptuary elements to Supreme Court and High Court judges. Uniform elements, ironing elements, all this they will be getting. So this will be the sumptuary elements. Then elements from United Nations Organization, World Bank and IMF. Always you have to remember that last module also I have explained that Kiran, Dr. Kiran Bedi, the present um, uh, present governor of Puducherry. So, madam is get madam worked, I think, 10 or 15 years back, uh, back, worked as IMF police advisor. At that time, if I could remember, some 10 lakhs or something was the monthly salary itself, plus all the allowances. Other cases, Shashi Tharoor, working, working with United Nations organization. What all allowances were they were getting from the United Nations or World Bank or IMF will be completely exempted. Now, allowances to teachers or professors from SARC member countries. This, when I explain the concept of salary, I have explained that teachers or professors or researchers from SARC countries, if they are coming to India to work for two years, it will be completely exempted. Then, allowances to member of Union Public Service Commission, UPSC, UPSC chairman or members of the UPSC, so that their allowances are also fully exempted. So, next we are coming to fully taxable allowances. You have to remember that if these items are there in the salary, it will be fully taxable. So, first one is dearness allowance. Dearness allowance, other terms used are additional DA. Additional dearness allowance will be there or high cost of living allowance will be there. High cost of living allowance meaning, see every now and then central government will be checking the inflation rate. So, when they are taking a decision to increase the DA is, they will see that Whatever salary is not sufficient because inflation is going up. Then they will decide central government employees DA should be increased by 2% or 3%. So they will get the immediate increase. Then state government employees also can expect that they are also going to get an increase in DA. So this is how they will increase the DA. It's the high cost of living elements. When the inflation is going, automatically our salary will be increased due to the increase in the DA. The government will automatically do that. First, the central government will implement that. Automatically, it will come to uh, state government also. Then it is the city compensatory elements. This component also will be there in the salary component. So you have to remember that city, those who are working in city, metropolitan cities, Delhi, Kolkata, Chennai, Bangalore, anywhere, they will get the city compensatory elements. It will be a small amount compared to DA, but they will be getting that amount. If I work in a rural area, I will not be eligible to get city compensatory allowance. Next is lunch allowance. See, if sometimes we get well, along with the training, then we will get lunch. 
that is not taxed because that is part of the training program. Whereas lunch allowance meaning you are getting a fixed amount for lunch. So that will be completely taxable. Similarly, tiffin allowance. Tiffin allowance meaning, so you have to remember that tiffin allowance is like snacks or the tea in between. So they are not serving in the organization. If they are serving in the organization, it's a totally different tax treatment. Here you have to remember that they are getting a fixed allowance, maybe 100 rupees per day if they are giving. If there is in the question, you have to remember that it will be fully taxable. Marriage allowances. This is usually for people working in companies. When they are going for marriage, they will company will give them some allowance. Similarly, family allowance. Family allowance is when they are starting the family, when they are going to when they are, when they are getting a child in their family, an addition to an additional member in the family as a child, then they will get the family allowance. Then deputation allowance. Deputation allowance meaning, see, you are a good employee. So they want to start another branch or they want to continue their operations in a different state. So they need an experienced person to start the operations there in the different state or a different country or a different place. Then what they will do? They will transfer this employee to the new place where they want to start the operations. So there they will get the deputation allowance. You are deputed. Always you can see in the government circle also it is there. IAS officers are deputed for a different post. So you have to remember that this will be completely taxable. Next is wardenship allowance. Wardenship allowance is for the employees working in the hostels as warden. So that also will be completely taxable. They will get free accommodation. Along with that, they will get a certain allowance for looking after the hostel inmates there. So that will be completely taxable. Continuing with that, non-practicing allowance. Now, what do you mean by non-practicing allowance? Non-practicing allowance meaning, say for a government doctor working in a government hospital, he has to sign an agreement stating that he will not do private practice. So that is non-practicing allowance. That meaning, they will get that allowance and it will be completely taxable. Once he will sign that, then if he is getting non-practicing allowance, he is not, not allowed to do any private practice. If he is doing that, government can take action. Now, project allowance. Project allowance is for researchers, those who are working in universities, those who are doing social research projects or any other research projects, they will get project allowance. So that will be completely taxable. Next will be overtime allowance. Overtime allowance meaning we have to remember that overtime allowance. So overtime allowance is when their company is working in different ships. So if they have to do complete uh, so certain export contracts are there, they have to immediate, they have to manufacture more items. So what they will do, they will request the employees to work overtime. So there they will get extra paid for that. So that is the overtime allowance. It will be completely taxable. Now fixed medical allowance. Fixed medical allowance also you have to remember that you are not spending that amount. It is already included in the salary as certain amount, 1000 rupees or 2000 rupees based on your position. You are getting a fixed amount that will be completely taxable. Now entertainment allowance for non-government employees. That you have to remember. Entertainment allowance for non-government employees will be completely taxable. This also I am going to explain as a different component. Now what do you mean by entertainment allowance? Entertainment allowance is sometimes in our official duty, we may have to entertain other customers or other guests, official guests. So we have to offer them tea, we have to offer them snacks, sometimes it's lunch, all that. See if it's in a university, an examiner coming from a different university, we have to entertain them. We have to give them snacks, we have to give them cold drinks, we have to give them tea, we have to give them lunch, we have to give them breakfast. So that is the entertainment elements. So this is what the meaning of entertainment elements. And you have to remember that if they are in the government sector, they are in getting some exemption that I am going to explain in a different module. Here you have to remember that if they are in the private sector, it will be completely taxable. Next is water and electricity elements. So this also you have to remember that if they are in the top level and all, if they want to continue with that employee because of their capability, because of their effectiveness. So they want to continue with that employee. So whatever all allowances they can give, they will give. So water and electricity, they will give certain amount as allowance. So that will be completely taxable. Next is servant allowance. Household servants in our house, employee's house. They can keep any number of servants, but if we don't, we are not getting allowance, we have to pay for that. But for top officials and all, servant allowance will be there. That meaning it will be completely taxable. Servant allowance we are getting. So that is completely taxable. That is for maintaining our own domestic health. We are getting an allowance. Next is holiday trip allowance. 
holiday trip allowance you have to remember that those employees they can go with the family for holiday uh, abroad or within india like that they will get the allowance for that that also will be completely taxable now entertainment allowance given to non government employees already i have explained that next thing you have to remember partially taxable allowances so partially taxable allowances you have to remember that house rent allowance that is the next module i am going to explain it's a totally different computation house rent allowance meaning you are getting some amount and how you are going to treat that that is the next module i will explain in detail now entertainment allowance for government employees that also i'm taking it as a separate module you know the meaning of entertainment allowance i'm going to explain that in detail now other things see now the next point is uh, some allowances i will mention they will get so for example uniform allowance imagine i am working in a police department i am getting 15000 so here the condition is whatever i receive minus whatever i had spent if any amount is balanced it will be taxable see for example uniform allowance i got 15000 i had spent only 10000 so 5000 is not spent that will be taxable imagine 15000 i got i had spent 15000 that meaning my extra amount is zero then i don't have to pay any tax so these are the items i am going to mention in the next point one is helper allowance helper is domestic help second is uniform allowance those who are in working navy army police department fire force all that they will get the uniform allowance academic research allowance those who are working in universities conveyance allowance for traveling then the other term traveling allowance if you want to work if you want to see if i'm working in bangalore now if i want to work go to delhi for a work or if i want to go to our pune campus for some work so traveling allowance we will get so that whatever amount i received minus whatever i spent if excess is there it will be taxable next is transfer allowance you might have heard this term in it sector it's very common or government employees also transferred from one place to another one city to another so then they will get the allowance so all these cases you have to remember that actual amount minus whatever is spent if anything excess is there it will be completely taxable now transport allowance is there transport allowance you have to remember fully taxable but for differently able persons 3200 per month this transport allowance fully taxable they made this change in the assessment year 2019 and 20 last assessment year only earlier we used to get the exemption so you have to remember transport allowance is fully taxable for ordinary people but only for differently able persons they will get 3200 per month so that will be exempted this you can expect as a two mark question i have seen that in the question papers what is transport allowance so it remember for everyone it will be taxable and you can add this extra point also last assessment year 2019 20 only they made this change but for differently able persons 3200 per month will be exempted you know the how difficult it is for them to travel that is why they are giving this exemption now running allowance is also important for a two mark question so running allowance you have to remember that is given to employees of private sector so please remember it's for the private sector employees those who are especially in the marketing job they will be always traveling throughout the country throughout the district throughout the uh, state they will be traveling so they have to get the running allowance running from one place to another so 70% of such allowance whatever they got see if they are getting 10000 70% of such allowance meaning it's 7000 or rupees 10000 per month whichever is less so in that case 7000 will be exempted if they are getting 14000 so 14000 into 70% or 10000 whichever is less like that you will calculate whatever the amount received into 70 that is the 70% into 70 by 100 compare it with 10000 whichever is less will be taxable now coming to two important concepts that is very very important this always will be there in the salary computation children education allowance and hostel expenditure allowance so children education allowance and hostel expenditure allowance not only it's there in the problems but also you have to remember that this will be there in the computation and this you can expect as the theory questions also two more questions because students always will make the mistake see how much we are getting allowance children education allowance rupees 100 per month but restricted to two own children now this word is very important own children own children meaning you can have children adopted children step children all this will be there 
that category will not come in the exemption if it's own children see if i got two children 100 per month that meaning 1200 in the year only i will get don't make mistake it's 100 per month it's a very no negligible amount you know that education allowance we cannot do anything with 100 rupees but still now also they are getting only 100 per month next one is hostel expenditure allowance see for example if my children are staying in hostel so what they will do 300 rupees per month for two own children you can claim an allowance you can claim the exemption see actual hostel expenditure minus 300 per month for two own children here also you have to remember own children that concept is very important stepchildren are not allowed allotted, not allowed adopted children are not allowed if it's your own children whatever hostel expenditure you received minus 300 per month for two own children 300 per month but children education allowance also whatever you actually received minus 100 per month but restricted to two own children now the third point is important if the employee is getting both education and hostel allowance he is allowed separate exemption for both education and hostel allowance but only for two own children only see some questions you can see that children education allowance also they are getting hostel education allowance also they are getting so you have to remember that both we can claim both he can claim but only for two own children that meaning own children is very important step children not allowed adopted children also not allowed so this is what I want to tell you about allowances and I told you this concept allowances is very important for the computation of salary. So because we will be dealing with these different allowances in different problems. So when I will do the full problems I will take the concepts one by one. Now I want to give a general idea and I hope that it is clear to you. I told you whatever you can expect as two more question. Children education allowance, hostel allowance, running allowance, conveyance allowance, transport allowance. What is the treatment for uniform allowance? Uh, what is the treatment? With, uh, name that ex completely exempted allowances, partially exempted allowances, fully taxable allowances. See, all these are theory also, questions are important. Then you, when you do the problems also, this you should be thorough with the concepts. So many allowances are there, which are usually you ask for salary computation. I have included in this module. I hope this is clear to you and you give me the feedback. On that basis, I can improve that. So that next module, we are going to explain house rent allowance. That is very, very important. Just like gratuity, leave and cashment and commutation of pension, house rent allowance will be there in all the problems. So house rent allowance, we are going to learn as the next module. So that's what and learn properly and write this in your notebook. Then you will learn that. So that's what I want to tell you and we'll see with the next module.